Well, it certainly has been an August like no other, a summer like no other, in fact. Now, the American economy is unfortunately in crisis. Our suburbs are falling into poverty, schools are struggling, cities are on the edge of bankruptcy, and jobs, well, those are few and far in between. But Congress, our esteemed lawmakers, our esteemed elected politicians, they're out on their annual summer break. Now, I do want to give our elected politicians some credit. They have been working very, very hard on a number of critical issues. For example, working to avert the first ever downgrade of our prized AAA credit rating, not to mention a few others like balancing the budget, solving the unemployment crisis, and maybe wrapping up a few wars. Now, if you get all of your information from cable news like I do, you'll know that this crisis, thankfully, all of these crises, have been averted. We can finally move on to the stories that actually matter, like these. But we are being told that the three people in custody are, in fact, the three siblings of the Doherty gang. The FBI is now part of the investigation looking for Robin Gardner. She's the 35-year-old woman who was on vacation with a man she had met online before she vanished. We're about to see Charlotte's new face for the very first time. That's right. With absolutely nothing else going on in the world right now, I think it's absolutely fair to say that Congress deserves a much-needed break. I mean, why exhaust yourself with dealing with those people who put you into office when, uh, in fact, you can spend an entire week relaxing right here? Take a look. Think of a 24-hour Mediterranean city. Tel Aviv. Think Israel. It's a beautiful place. I've been there. But according to news reports, 81 U.S. lawmakers and their spouses, mind you, have chosen to spend about a week relaxing in Israel, trips that are being paid for by a foundation set up by APAC, which is, of course, a pro-Israel lobby group. Now, Israel does happen to be the single largest foreign recipient of U.S. aid dollars, so, of course, there's no conflict of interest there. And while 20 percent of our lawmakers of the U.S. Congress may be in Israel, and it may seem like a lot of people, that's, in fact, how many people it takes to repair ties between the two countries, which are broken. Take a listen. Our countries are good friends, and I'm the Minister of Defense. I can tell you that I can hardly remember. I was in uniform for decades. I can hardly uh, remember a better period of uh, both support, American support, and backing and Israel cooperation. And, and similar strategic understanding of events around us uh, than what we have right now. Okay, well, he was talking about the Obama administration. But the reason that 81 lawmakers absolutely have to take this trip is because of the rest of the Congress. You see, those guys have to come back and convince the other 354 members of Congress to stop hating on Israel. After all, nobody wants a repeat of that disastrous reception that uh, Israel's prime minister got last time he visited Capitol Hill. Like I said, it's an August like no other. Well, joining me us now for more on the story from our LA studio is ST Chandler. She is the organizer of the Los Angeles chapter of Jewish Voice for Peace. Uh, ST, sarcasm aside, um, I do want to start off by by asking you to speak as an American citizen, taking uh, the Israeli-Palestinian issues, the politics out of the equation for a moment. Uh, these shenanigans that we saw here in Congress, in fact, did help spark a major market sell-off, uh, fears of a double-dip recession, and nearly a fifth of the American Congress is off to visit a single country whose population is less than that of New York City in terms of size. Uh, as a citizen, what's your reaction? Well, as a citizen, you know, like you said, I'm, I'm dismayed by it. I feel like Congress... Uh, people should be back in their districts talking to their own constituents about the problems that they face about the mortgage crisis and how many Americans are being uh, forced into foreclosure uh, with shady documents. It seems odd that they would be going on this trip funded, as you say, by uh, APAC to Israel when there is no crisis in that relationship. What America funds for APAC are billions of dollars of military funding. They feed the industrial military complex there. 
Now, one would think, I mean, you know, we are talking about a news cycle here, that 20% of the American Congress going on a week-long trip to a foreign country, paid for essentially by a lobby of that country, would be at least somewhat newsworthy, um, especially when top congressional leaders of both parties are leading these trips. Why do you think this is not, uh, does not seem to be on the radar of the mainstream press? It's very discouraging. The only uh, mainstream media that I've heard report it is NPR. Um, the U.S. media doesn't seem to be covering in an honest way many of the things that go on there. I haven't seen the stories about the giant protests that have now reached 300,000 people in Israel where they're going out in the streets and asking for more of their tax dollars to be spent on them as opposed to maintaining this brutal occupation of the Palestinians, this continued separation of peoples with their separation walls to keep uh, Gazans separated from the people who live in the West Bank, to keep uh, Israeli, Jewish Israelis separate from other uh, Palestinian communities in Israel. The, the mainstream media seems to be lacking in reporting the actual facts on the ground there not just now, but f for a long time now. Well, and, and it is kind of ironic you mentioned the protests that have been going on in Israel, in, in part because the Israelis have been protesting the, the high cost of living in that country. Uh, of course, Americans have been pro protesting the same sort of thing, uh, not in the same numbers, but our lawmakers are over there instead. But um, as far as these trips go, um, we do know that Israel is a close ally of the United States. And uh, one number I read was about 10% of all congressional seas, uh, overseas trips have been to Israel, even though it's one of nearly 200 countries in the world. It's not unusual, but why do you think at this point in time such a large number? What would prompt APAC to make this bigger push to get more lawmakers over there? What, what's the crux issue at hand right now? Well, it would seem that we're, when we really need funding back here at home to deal with our own crumbling infrastructure, our uh, need for more education dollars, our need for health care reform, that Israel wants to make sure that we continue to give upwards of three billion dollars a year which doesn't aid Israeli citizens it aids again military contractors it's you know the same problems we have there uh, here excuse me they have there it looks like the Arab Spring might be becoming an Israeli summer and if we can get the citizenry of uh, America behind this and pressure our lawmakers to come back home and deal with the problems that we have here in our own communities. And the Israelis can keep up pressuring their lawmakers to stop spending such a high percentage of their tax dollars on a brutal occupation and deal with their domestic needs, then maybe we can actually make some progress. Now, one of the issues that's obviously supposed to come up next month in the United Nations General Assembly is the Palestinian statehood issue. Do you think that perhaps that somehow factors into this uh, seemingly bigger push by uh, the, the APAC organization to get more lawmakers into Israel? Absolutely. That's what we're reading, that one of the big pushes to get so many people there was to make sure that they uh, use their veto power, as they have in the UN, to stop the uh, Palestinians from being declared a state. I think, actually, it would be a brilliant move by Israel if they support it. It would uh, even the uh, playing field for the negotiations. It would, the negotiations have been stuck and uh, it, it could possibly be a great catalyst for moving things forward, for saying now that we have two entities representing two people, let's sit down and figure out how we can live together. After all, it's not a giant piece of land. It is a battle over land. And if they can figure out how to live together peacefully, which is what the majority of the citizens, both Palestinians and Israelis, seek. They seek peace, security, democracy for all citizens, Israeli and Palestinian alike. Uh, the, the thing is, though, it does seem confusing because I, I, maybe you can answer this question for me. I mean, is there any question, was there ever any question that the United States uh, wouldn't support, uh, w would somehow uh, suddenly turn around and support uh, a, a, an independent Palestinian state next month? I mean, was that really up in question? No, of course not. But 
you know, they want to make sure, they want to make sure that the military money continues to flow. As I said, we have great domestic needs to spend our tax dollars here at home, and I'm sure that Israel wants to make sure that there are no cutbacks in uh, what we send to them in uh, military support. Uh, well, you know, I guess uh, I don't really know what else to say. I mean, uh, I hope these I hope these folks have a nice vacation, and uh, I hope that at some point uh, somebody here in Washington remembers that there are some issues uh, going on in this country right here, right now, that need to be dealt with, and uh, start working on those. Well, thank you so much. That was S. A. Chandler, organizer for the Los Angeles chapter of Jewish Voice for Peace. Thank you so much.